Hi, I'm Mike Turner, offensive coordinator and offensive line coach at Carson Newman College. Today we're going to talk about offensive line techniques and fundamentals pertinent to the split back veer offense. I think in coaching the offensive line, you have to start with a foundation and work your way up. And we believe here at Carson Newman that the first part of that foundation is to be able to put a player in a good preset position to a stance and then to be able to come out of the stance to execute. The first part of a good stance is being able to get in a preset position. What we're trying to do in our preset position is get our players ready to also be able to pass block and run block out of it at the same time. So when we get in a preset position, we're asking them to get their feet at shoulder width apart, try to take their toes and pigeon toe them inside. All right, at that point, they're going to come down and put their hands on the thigh pads, drop their tail, sink their hips right there, and at this position right there, we should be able to come off and run block or we should be able to pass and set block at the same time. The reason we want them to take a little bit of a pigeon toe inside with their feet is so as they work their way in their stance, the worst they'll come back out is a straight position. They've got their heels slightly off the ground, about a quarter of an inch off the ground. We don't want to get flat footed because that'll give away whether it's a pass or a run at the same time. When we get in a stance and, and we're trying to drill them, we're going to get in a preset, preset, preset that we feel like they're comfortable in it. And then we'll go from there and say down and put the hand down and be in a stance. All right, here we go, preset. Down. All right, as you walk around, if you tell a guy just slightly raise his tail, right here is good, right here is good, need to raise his tail just a little bit right there. But they're looking through their eyebrows, fingertips on the ground. They got 50% on the balls of their feet and on their hands. The offhand here is cocked that it can come and replace it. And when you release them, you just say go and they'll come out of stance. Go. All right, right there. All right, good. Good. Probably the most overlooked part of an offensive line play today is being able to get a, a kid in a good stance. So what we're asking them to do is go ahead and get in the preset position right here. And we're telling them to get their heels off the ground, that we want 50% of the weight on the balls of their feet. All right, from this position, they're going to put their hand on the ground. And as they put it down, they're going to put the hand, the down hand, out even with their knee, out in front of it, on their fingertips, have 50% on the fingertips, 50% on the balls of their feet. All right, here we go. Down. All right, right there is a good look at a, pre, at a stance right here. We've got fingertips. We're on the balls of our feet right there. What we try to do is take the offhand and place it beside of the knee so it doesn't rest and get a lunge type thing with that other hand as they get more tired during the game. If they have the hand beside of the knee here, when the ball is snapped, they can replace it right now and take care of it. They should be looking through their eyebrows right there, not pulling their head back, being uncomfortable. And you can see they've got their tail slightly above their head right there in that position. I think the most important part is the stance, how to get in the stance. The second part of that is how to come out of the stance. So we talk about stance and start. It's just like being a track guy, even though you're dealing with offensive linemen. So we want to make sure we've got a good, sound base, and that's their stance, that those kids can get in that stance and be able to come out of it and be a football player. And the most important part after a good stance is how to get out of it. All right, we got three young men here. We're going to go preset position with them right here. All right, go ahead and be in the preset. Okay, now from here, we'll take them and say down. And we're going to work on the first step coming out of their stance. And we work on it as just a pickup step. And what we're trying to get them to do when they come out of their stance is just take the foot that we call for and just pick it up and put it down. The worst thing that happens in an offensive lineman uh, coming off the line of scrimmage to block is that he oversteps that first step. He gets in this position. When he gets in this position and makes contact with a defensive lineman, he's going to corkscrew and come off the block. So what we try to teach them is this. When you make contact with a defensive lineman, make sure you got both feet on the ground. The only way to do that is to make sure that you don't overstep the first step. So we simply call it a pickup step. So we'll get them in their, in their preset position. We'll say down and we'll go right foot, pickup step, and freeze. When they take that pickup step, that's like cocking the gun. Those thumbs are going to come back toward the breastplates. They're going to be looking through their eyebrows. They're going to be flat back and ready to attack. All right, here we go. Right foot, pick up step, and freeze. Bam. Go. Freeze. Stay there, stay there, stay there. Now, we come out of a stance pretty good. You want to make sure that, that the player understands by keeping his hands open right there, that he's got his thumbs cocked up near his breastplate, got his hands open. He's behind his pads right here. You don't see anybody off balance right there. Their pads are parallel. Their pads are over their knees. So the first step 
is to take a pickup step and put it down and cock your thumbs. And from there, all you need to do to tell a player is look down at your feet and see how far you stepped. You know, if he's got a step like this, no chance for that block to be successful. If he simply come out of his base position and picked it up and put it down right there, now he's going to be in a good stance when he makes contact. When teaching an offensive lineman blocking, whether it be a drive block, a reach block, a down block, there has to be a hitting position. And we talk about the hitting position be a, being a tripod. And, and what the hitting position is, is it the hairline of the head and it's the heels of the hands. And what we try to show them is this. If James here were to bend over at his waist and have his head down right there, now he is not in a good power position. The power position is always with your head up. You know, there's a preset position, there's a stance. That's the power line. Right now, he's not in the power line. There's an offensive lineman right there bent at the waist. That's the weakest point he is. And we try to demonstrate him this way, and we tell him to raise up now. And he can't get up. All right, now he holds his head up. Now I tell him to stand up. And he can't be held down because that's the power line. So the second part of that is we teach him, as you get ready to make contact as a blocker, you take your head and you turtle your head. And you turtle your head just like the picture of a turtle out on the highway. His head stuck out of that shell, and he's going to bring it back in here in this position. That's the fit position right there. So when we tell them to turtle their head, these guys know how to bring it in right there. All right, we worked on a pickup step and freeze. We'll do that with the right foot, do it with the left foot, do it with the right foot, the left foot, till, they, till that becomes an automatic uh, function for them. And we talk to them about doing something 10, 12, 15 times as a habit doing it plus 25 times, 50 times, 100 times, it becomes a skill. So this is a skill for offensive linemen. Probably the most important skill is getting themselves in a good hitting position. All right, we'll go preset position. All right, we're going to go right foot, two-step pop. Pick-up step is the first step. When they bring that second step, we just tell them it's a catch-up step. All they're going to do is catch up with it. All right, so it's right foot, pick-up step, catch-up step, and freeze. Here we go. Down. Go. All right, right there. All right, now here's what we ask them to do. On that first step right there, on that pickup step, they froze right there. They're behind their shoulder pads, got their thumbs in there, cocked and ready to go. On the second step, they're going to punch up. All right, let's go back and do it again right there. All right, we're going to go, we're going to go pick up step and freeze first. All right, here we go. Let's go left foot this time. Left foot, pick up step and freeze. What, what, what we want to concentrate on right there is, is the step, making sure the distance is right but also that we got those thumbs cocked right there and we got our hands behind our pads. Here we go. Down. Go. Freeze. Right there is good shape. Now when they take that second step, they're going to bring that other foot and it's simply a catch-up step. It catches up with it. And as they bring that, they're going to punch up and they roll their hips. All right, back. Back. All right, here we go. All right, left foot, two-step pop and freeze. Left foot, two-step pop and freeze. Here we go. Down. Go. Punch up right there. Now, what you look for is freeze. Everything is a one step and freeze or two step and freeze. And what you're looking for right here is that they got their hips under them, they're behind their pads, their, their shoulder pads are over their knees, they're punching up. And what you want to make sure of right here in Jeff's, make sure those elbows are locked out. And if they punch up, okay, now those elbows will lock out. If the thumbs are up, elbows lock. If the thumbs are turned inside, you'll get a bend there and it'll give on the block. We've worked on a stance. We worked on a start coming out of it. The next, all of this is leading up to the, to the number one block, and that's a drive block versus a head-up defensive player. So the next thing we take them to is this. We're going to go back to a preset position. We're going to get in a stance, and then we're going to work on the two-step pop. That's simply the pickup step and then the catch-up step together right there. And we've done it on air previously here. Now we're going to go back and put it up against the bag. So as the offensive lineman gets down, we have the defensive guy with the bag right here is going to get just a little bit closer than he normally would with that bag because we don't want him lunging. What we're looking for right here is the contact point, but you want the contact point with the hips underneath of you and then you'll have a base, keep the base underneath of you. All right, here we go. We're going to go preset position. Down. All right, now bring that bag a little closer. Bring it up a little closer, a little closer right there. All right, two to right foot, two-step pop and freeze. Ready? Go. Right there. All right, freeze. Stay there. Stay there. Now, it's the same thing we've done on air, and now you put it with a bag, and you're looking at the impact. You're looking at the punch that the player's getting, but you're also looking at his base position. Okay, back. Back. Again, the most important thing is to make contact with both feet on the ground. 
these guys all had a good base right there. Again, keeping you keeping your uh, feet as wide as your armpits or just a little bit wider. But they had a good base underneath of them. They had a good punch. So now you can put the two things together right here. Talk about a punch because you can see and hear it, and you're not worried about somebody chasing a bag all over the place. I right, will do it again right there. We're going to go left foot. All right, two-step pop and freeze. Down. All right, get a little closer with the bags. Come on up there closer. Go. Freeze. All right, good. Hold right there. Hold. Hold. Now you see right here on James, he's got too big a stagger on the impact. All right, these two are pretty, these two right here are pretty base with it right there. All right, back one more time. All right, all this is is the beginning point of a drive block. It's a head up defender. Now, we're going to take it to the next part. One more time, we're going to work on the two step pop and then we'll just make it a full drive block. All right, here we go. You ready? Preset position. Down. One thing you're looking for here is make sure everybody's punching up. All right, right foot, two-step pop and freeze. Go. Right there. Now, look at their hands. Their hands are up. Okay, their thumbs are up. That's going to lock their arms out. They're not going to give when it hits against a defensive guy. They got in front of their knees. They've got their tail underneath them. All right, they're in good shape. All right, back. Okay, now we're going to put it together. The first part of this is a drive block versus a head-up defender. So all it becomes a drive block it's which foot they step with is determined by which way the ball is going. So we're saying it's going to the right here. We're going to go right foot. All right, we're going to go drive block, right foot. All it is is a two-step pop, and then they're going to take their feet and work them like a piston. da 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 right there. And they're going to keep a base. That keeps a base, their feet churning. And we talked to them about pounding the ground with their feet. You don't want the foot taken up out of the ground. You want it pounding the ground. All right, here we go. Right foot, drive block. Okay. Down. Pick the bag up under your chin just a little bit. Go. All right, right there. Good, good. You saw the punch. You saw the punch. You saw the good arm lockout right there and also remain a good base. One more time on a drive block here. And again, it's a head-up defender. Which foot I step with depends on where the ball's going. All right, we're going to go a drive block now with the left foot. Head-up defender, drive block, left foot. Down. All right, good, good, good. All right, bring them back. All right, those guys were all in good shape, and that's the first part of it. We've built a stance, we worked on the takeoff, and now we get to the blocking part. You've got to build things in offensive line play. You've got to build it in a foundation. You've got to build it in a stepping stone. The first block we worked on was a drive block versus a head-up defender. The second thing that's going to happen in football is that defender moves from head up to an outside technique. If the offensive lineman and the ball is going to the right side here, came off the football and simply tried to execute a drive block here, he'll be knocking the defender into the football. So when we got an outside technique, we're going to use a reach block. And I, I think the thing that's different about it is that we don't want the reach block to be a position step. Kids make a mistake in a, in a reach block, and their biggest mistake is they want to go parallel first. If you go parallel first on a reach block, you've lost, you've lost the line of scrimmage. So we want our first step is going to be that pickup step, just like back at the first of it, that pickup step right at his outside knee. And that's the most important step is making sure that they don't position step. So what we're going to do here is that these three guys, there's the defense there with the outside technique. We're going to go right foot, reach step, and freeze just to show the technique right here. All right, here we go. Hold the bag up under your chin there, please. Now he's got where the knee is. All right, right foot, just pick up step and freeze. Bam. Back the bag up just a little bit. Go. Right there is good. Now stay right there. Good. You see every one of those steps are up the field. We're probably a little too far on a couple of them, but the main thing is the step is up the field. On a reach block, we don't want to lose the line of scrimmage. We're trying to move the line of scrimmage on a drive block. We should be able to move the line of scrimmage on a reach block, even though it's against an outside technique. All right, back. So we're going to drill just back at the beginning and build the foundation about a pickup step and freeze. Now the next part of this on a reach block. We, we teach the kid that his first step's at the outside knee and on his second step he wants his face and hands on the outside shoulder pad. So what these guys are going to do, they're lined up in an outside technique with the bag. When that offensive lineman moves, they're going to take one step with the bag. All right, we're going to go right foot, reach step, two steps and freeze right here. Here we go, preset position. Back your bag up just a hair there, guys. Down. Right foot, two steps and freeze. Go. All right, now right there. Now, that looks like 
I'm not going to get the line of scrimmage moved. But right now, we've got leverage on the defensive lineman. Number one thing is we move the line of scrimmage because both steps have been up the field. The second thing is we're at his outside shoulder pad. The only thing that defensive lineman has to make a tackle with is from his shoulder pad down right there. So these guys are in great shape on the angle. We teach them this. From this position, the worst thing you could do is try to swing your hips. If you swing your hips right here, they get in the way of the running back. So what we want a guy, a guy to do on a reach block right here is to just simply drive that line. He's not going to take the defensive man and turn him this way. We don't care about that. We want to move the, the uh, line of scrimmage. Okay, now we're going to work on a reach block to the left. It's the same idea. It's a pickup step with his foot nearest the knee, right at the knee. On the second step, he's trying to get his face and hands at the outside pad of the defensive lineman. All right, here we go. We're going to go two steps and freeze right here. Reach left. Got an outside technique, two steps and freeze. Bam. Go. Step, freeze, freeze. All right, now, look at the position right here. They're in great position. They're up the field. They're moving the line of scrimmage. They got outside leverage on the defensive player, and the only thing he would have left to make a tackle with is right here. All right, we've worked on a head-up defensive player. That's a drive block. The next thing was an outside technique player. That's a reach block. In both those blocks, we're trying to move the line of scrimmage. We're trying to get position on the defensive lineman. We're trying to maintain a good base in our stance, working our feet, pounding the ground. We're trying to play behind our pads. The next block that we want to teach here is a down block. You get an inside defender. An in the inside defender usually is trying to penetrate the line of scrimmage. So what we're trying to do here, again, is move the line of scrimmage. Don't step position. Uh, Sometimes it's been shown that you try to do a cross body block. We're trying to move the line of scrimmage. So our aiming point's a little different. So now these offensive guys have an inside defender right here. And Coach Crothers will show you how we try to practice this is take the bag and turn it right at his outside eye. So this is a down block with a left foot. They've got an inside technique that's trying to penetrate the line of scrimmage. So they tilt the bag at the left eye. And we're going to take the pickup step, and our aiming point here is the head. The middle of that bag is the head of the defensive player. And as they take the two steps and freeze, if you stand behind them as you're coaching them, you'll see that the line of scrimmage, that their shoulder pads and tail stays parallel. They don't get crossed over. Coach Crowe will come on this side. He'll show you the biggest mistake a guy makes in this block is called stepping under the head. When he's trying to make a down block, this could be a center blocking back blocking back for a guard on a trap, all right, or somebody trying to block an inside technique. He doesn't step at the head. He tries to twist his foot right here, and when he does that, he's stepping under his head, and that allows the defensive lineman to penetrate the line of scrimmage. All right, let's work on it right here. Two-step pop. Got a down block left, two steps, and freeze. Down. Go. Freeze. Now, right there. Now they're back to a base position. That's the most important thing is that they're back to a base position. They've got their feet as wide as their shoulder pads or shoulders. They've got the hands in the right hitting position. They're behind their shoulder pads and they have a base under them. Now all they do from that point is just like they did in a drive block, just like they did in a reach block. They pound the ground with their feet and work them like pistons. All right, bring them back. All right, now do the same thing except we're going to do a full deal right here. Okay, got down block left. All the way with it. Down block left. Down. Go. Ho, oh, right there is good. There you go, good. As you're coaching, you're looking behind it, what you're looking for there is straight lines. All right, as long as he's got a straight line, what he's done is kept his base. And that's the most important part of this block or any other block. All right, the next block we're going to work on is a scoop block. Uh, I really think this is an important part of our uh, uh, offensive line play at Carson Newman. It would be for any uh, option attack team. We start our center off on a scoop. Most of his rules are zero through the play side gap. So he's got zero, and we start off a center. We don't play very many uh, Oki teams or 50 front teams anymore. Most of them are 4-3. But we'll always start out working against a zero nose, and what we're trying to do is get this player to play on the ground, play on all fours. And we feel like that's got an advantage, as we show you a little bit later as we come to it. But what we're trying to do here, he's stepping at a 45-degree line, and on his second step, he's going to be on all fours, and he's running that line. What this does is allows the center, he's trying to get his head across the knee of the nose man right here. 
If he'll get his head to that side and work all four as hard as he can go with it, then he's cut off the zero or the technique from sliding down the line of scrimmage. So let's look at Matt right here, and we're just going to look at a couple steps and just talk, just talk about this part. See, his rule is through, is through the play side gap. So what he's trying to do, and he'll take off a step 45 degrees. On that second step, he'll have all both hands on the ground. He'll be on all fours, and he's going to work the line right here. We want him to work this line and not worry about it. He don't want to get up off the ground. Just slide on all fours. Okay, let's do it right here just with Matt. Here we go. Bam. Go. Okay, that's pretty good. And that's just a repetitive process. That's over and over and over and over again. All right. Now, so we start the, the scoop part of it right here. If the center is covered, the main part of the scoop is with the center and the offside guard. Okay, because the center is covered. So when we drill this, we're working two blocks in one. We're working this guard right here, working on a linebacker block. Or he could be working on a reach block right here. Come on up. And we'll work a reach block right here. Right here, we're scooping the zero nose. All right, and we'll tell this guy to come play side or go back side, and that linebacker will move. What we teach the offside guard, the center's covered. So his first step is a pickup step right at the head of the down lineman. If that head goes away, he'll continue right off that line, and he'll block the backside linebacker. Great thing about this is this is 95% of the game because the backside, the majority of the time, is running a scoop on the backside or a double scoop. Okay, so we're going to the right here. Uh, Nate's going to do a reach block here, and we're going to scoop right here. Jeff, you watch me right here. All right, here we go. Bam. Go. Okay. All right, good, right there. That's a pretty good look at it. He did a good job of getting his head up the field. The most important thing for a coach to do right here is he gets down. Go ahead and get down. Is that you've got to stand behind him, and you've got to watch his first step. It's just like a reach block. That kid that plays that position, what he would like to do is take his foot and go parallel. That's the easy way to get it done. But when he does that, the same as a reach block, he steps parallel, he's lost the line of scrimmage. He either loses that or he allows the zero technique down the line of scrimmage. So you got to stand behind him and watch his foot. All right, here we go. Ready? This way. Damn. Go. Good. Ho, oh, right there. That's good. Okay, another part of the scoop block is with the center and guards against a 40 stack. Uh, got two inside players and two stack linebackers. What we're asking our center to do is always step play side gap, all right, with his near foot. So we're running the play to the right here. The guard has a three technique. He's going to be making a reach block. Our center is going to step play side. As he steps play side, if this linebacker runs the A gap, then that's his block. He'll cut the outside leg right there. That's his block. As he takes one step and the linebacker steps away, he'll turn backside and attack the linebacker. That's his scoop. The offside guard has the two eye, so he's going to be on all fours with a cutoff block. All right, we'll take a look at it here. All right, we're going to the right. Okay, back up one step, Task. Okay, stay in there. Bend over right there. Give him a good look with the down people. Yeah, three. Here we go. Down. Go. Right there. All right, that's a pretty good look at it. The thing we want to do is make sure with these guys, this is the play side. He's, he's got a three technique. He knows he's reach blocking. We, we want him to concentrate on coming off the football. Anything inside of that is where the, the scoop on the backside is taking care of it. All right, one more time right here. Here we go, linebacker, give us this look. Do that. Right there. Down. Go. Good. Right there is good. Right there is good. Now we protected the play side A gap. Okay, simply because he's got his head up the field. He takes one step to that play side. If that linebacker is coming, he cuts him. If he doesn't, he attacks backside to the backside linebacker. All right, the next scoop we're going to talk about involves the guard and tackle. Uh, on this particular scoop, if we had a center inside here in this position, he'd be uncovered. Could be a 4-3 or it could be a 40 stack. He's uncovered. So the primary scoop now is between the guard and the tackle. It starts off if the tackle would communicate, the guard would communicate to the tackle, making sure he knows he's covered in what he has right here. He knows now he's got a three technique. So to start this scoop, 
starts off with a guard. We're going to come off the football, and we're going to release with our inside pad through the inside pad of this down lineman right here. What we don't want to do is this. It's easy to run this scoop. Most people you see run the scoop, and they'll go this way. When that happens, they're collapsing the line of scrimmage down inside, and you're losing the wall on the backside. So we want to make sure we're releasing up through his pad right here, okay, and he's trying to get to the backside linebacker. The offside tackle now, it's just moved out one man. Now the primary scoop is over the guard. So now the tackles deal is just like the guard was a while ago where the center was covered. He's going to step at the head of the down lineman. If that head goes away from him right there, he'll come right off his tail, and he's got backside linebacker to free safety. That's the track he's on on the seal or a scoop. All right, we'll step right here and take a couple looks at it. Okay, here we go. Do this right there. Bam. Go. Tail good. All right, good. Right there is good. Back. All right. Here we go. All right, one more time. He's making sure on his step right there, as he steps, he's stepping right at that head so that he can see the head. If it goes away from him, he'll stay right on this track right there because that gives him a chance to cut off the backside linebacker. It also puts him on a straight line to be interference down the field. Okay, here we go. Down. Go. Good. Right there is good. All right, good look at it. Good look at it. Okay, we're going to look at the primary scoop between the guard and tackle on the backside again. We're working on the left side here. This time, the guard has an inside technique. The center is uncovered. He has a look or primary scoop again is between the guard and the tackle. The guard has communicated to the tackle that he has an inside technique. All right. So the guard knows now he has an inside technique. The first thing he's going to do with an inside technique is that's still his scoop. All right. So we, we do a cutoff block. And what he ends up being here, the guard is just like the center. He's coming off his first step inside 45. On the second step, he's going to be on all fours. All right, James, let's show him here. Down. Go. Right there. All right, good. He's got an inside technique. What we're trying to do with a double scoop on the backside is build a wall on the backside. At the point of attack on the play side, we're always going to build a wall. On the backside, build a wall with, for the backside for the scoop. So he's got an inside technique. He's going to be doing a cutoff block. The tackle now knows it's an inside technique. His track is linebacker to free safety. All right, one more time. Here we go. Down. Go. All right, good. Right there is good. Okay, the next block that we come to uh, in an option offense, we've worked on a drive block with a head-up technique, worked on a reach block with an outside technique, worked a down block versus an inside technique, and then we worked the scoop on the backside. Those are the three and four basic blocks for any option attack. Uh, probably the headline one of all of it would be a veer block. Uh, we, we're going to be a veer team, a split back veer team. Uh, that would be our tackle. We're also going to be a midline team at times, so that's going to be our guard. Our tight end has to veer block. He has to do that to get to a linebacker to block. Uh, he has to veer block to run a route and release inside. So rather than teach the tackles one day, the guards two days later, the tight ends one day later, when we do the veer block, we try to teach it all at one time. Uh, when we teach a veer block, we're teaching it as an aggressive escape technique. What we're telling the offensive lineman, Coach Crothers, the offensive lineman here, we're telling him to work his way to the first man inside, which is a linebacker. He's trying to get himself to the linebacker right here. What he has on him here is some kind of a technique, whether it be a head up or an outside technique. All right. The easy way that a kid wants to go to block the first man inside is come off and take two straight steps at him. So we started in steps and go back to the, to the step progression just like we did a drive block. His first step is a pickup step at the linebacker. The camera right here is the linebacker. So as he comes out of his stance, he's going to go one step and freeze right there. Right there. There's his pickup step right at that target. All right, now he's got the target. What we'll do now is we'll go back to that, and we'll do that a few times to make sure that's automatic. It's the same idea as a drive or a reach. If he comes off the line of scrimmage and steps like this to go get a linebacker, he'll never release from a defensive lineman. So the next thing we do is put it with a two-step and freeze. All right, so he's going to veer block. 
as he takes his second step, he's going to roll his inside arm and shoulder right there and turn it and step up the field. All right, one more time. What we're trying to do right here is this. If that defensive lineman can touch any part of this upper shoulder pad right here, he's going to push it down inside, and there goes the veer lane. He'll never escape to get to the linebacker. What we want them to do is be able to turn their shoulders this way so that they get the come on around. They get the flat part of that shoulder pad. If they get the flat part of that shoulder pad, their hands will glance off of it. One more time. If he'll rever when he tries to turn his shoulder, he's got to dip and rip that shoulder. And what he wants to do is maintain keeping this arm in there close so the guy can't hook it. Right there. At this point, those hands will glance off the back of that shoulder pad. All right, one more time. All right, it's a two-step pop right here with a veer block. Go. Right there. Now he's turned it. He's got a chance right now to work his way up the field right here and come off of that. All right? All right, back. So we got him in a good stance. We've got the aiming point with a pickup step. We're going to rip and roll with that outside arm and shoulder pad and make sure that step goes up the field. If both steps come inside, he gets K down inside. There's no veer lane. Plus, nobody, nobody will ever be able to get to the linebacker right there. All right, so we'll turn around and look at these three guys. If we were running the midline option, here's the guard. He's got to be able to veer block. We're running the veer option. Here's the tackle. He's got to be the veer blocker. We're trying to block the linebacker inside. If we're trying to release for a pass route, this guy's a veer blocker. So we try to teach them all the same thing at the same time, and that minimizes the coaching, but it also, also maximizes the reps. All right, here we go. Got a veer, a veer step with your left foot right there. Veer left. Two steps and freeze. Down. Go. All right, good. Back. All right, good. Back. Good. It's the same idea. You've got to have your base under you. After those two steps, the kid has to be in a base position. We're trying to get him to turn that shoulder. The natural thing is to do this. Okay? That's the natural thing to do. You're not trying to fight your way through it. You're trying to escape it. If Coach Crothers and I were coming down the street at each other right here, and sometimes we'll have them do this. And we're walking down the sidewalk at each other. If neither one of us wants to give and give up turf, the easiest thing to do is the veer block. I'm going to veer release him with this shoulder. He's going to veer release with that one. So we're walking at each other. You just veer release right there, and we don't hit each other. We don't start a fight on the street. Okay? Let's do it right here one more time. Let's go with a veer block on this side. Midline, veer, pass release, or block a linebacker. Down. Go. All right, good. Back. All right, good. Good. All right, now, set. we've got him to that position. That's the most important thing, that a guy has to sell out to turning that shoulder pad. He has to sell out to giving the flat part of that shoulder pad up. All right, now, get to your linebacker inside, all right? So be a full veer block. Get to your linebacker inside, the midline, the veer, the linebacker block. Here we go. Down. Go. All right, good. Right there is good. Okay, we're going to look at the veer block here with the left side. Again, this is the guard. He'll be veer blocking on the midline. This is the tackle. He's going to veer block on the veer. This is a tight end, a veer block to an inside linebacker, or veer block to release for a route. So we're going to go the two-step pop. Okay, we got veer left here. Going on your right foot. Two steps and freeze. Down. Go. Freeze. Stay right there. Now stay right there. Good. You can see what part they've given the defensive player to hit. That's the most, that's the most important part. All right, back. You know, the best way to reinforce this is it's not me standing here telling him he did good or me standing here telling him he's got to dip that shoulder and him nodding his head. It's get a camera behind him where he can see his feet. All right, so get a camera behind him. Let him see him repping it. Let him see where his steps are going. It's a much better learning process. All right, one more time. All right, veer with the right foot there. Here we go. Two steps and free. Down. Go. Good. Right there is good. Good. All right, back. All right, now, let's work a full veer block. I'm trying to run the midline right here to the, to the middle linebacker. Veer block right here to the stack linebacker. Veer release right here and up the field for a route. Okay, so we got a veer with the, right, with the right foot. Here we go. Down. Go. Step inside, good. Right there is good. Good job right there. We're going to take a, the veer book behind us now. 
and we're going to look at the steps, the two steps and freeze, and we'll look at a full veer block all the way through with it. But now you can see behind, and this is the shot you got to give a kid that's working on a veer block so that he can see his feet, but he can also see how his shoulders are turning or not turning. He can also see his arm flying outside. If he's trying to veer block and he's swinging his arm outside, that's just another something for a defensive guy to grab hold of. So he must keep that elbow in there tight to his body and turn that shoulder pad. All right, here we go. We've got veer left. Two steps and freeze. Down. Go. Good. Right there's good. All right, back. Good. Good. All right. Let's go all the way through with it now. Got the midline right here. Inside veer here. Got a veer, veer release to a route right there, David. Down. Go. All right, good. Good. Right there's good. Okay, the next uh, part of offensive line play comes at the tight end position. Uh, on a tight end, on a veer option or a dive option, with a tight end is going to be the arc blocker. Probably the, uh, the worst situation you put a tight end as an arc blocker at this position is that he's going to go block the force player. That's the player outside that's going to come and take the pitch. Uh, the biggest mistake you see is a tight end releases up the field in this direction. And when he gets there and tries to make a block, the defender's always got outside leverage on him. So the one thing we want on a, on a uh, arc block by our tight ends is to make sure we've got outside leverage. Uh, the philosophy there is get the outside leverage. If we pitch the football, then we've got the sideline to run to. Or we give the tight end, I mean the uh, running back, a look to cut back in or outside. So we try to do it from, a, from an arc, arc block type thing, and we teach them this, that their first step is going to go open step right here at this position. As he takes that open step, he's got his head up. If an outside linebacker at the line of scrimmage crosses his face, then he would continue on and lock him up and attack him right here. But what he's doing is taking three deliberate steps right here. He's going to go open step, crossover step, plant right here. He's got his head up, and at that point, he's identified who has the force or who has the pitch. When he comes off of that third step and he explodes off of it, what we want him to be able to do is have his head up the field, he's got his shoulder pads parallel, and he's trying to take the outside position on the defensive player. So what we want to look at here is just their steps. Uh, close it in a little bit there, Dave. All right, we're going to go arc block right. The hardest thing for a tight end in doing this is to keep from rocking back, all right, because the natural thing for him to do is to rock back. If he's rocking back, he's going to lose the line of scrimmage if it takes place from the line of scrimmage. So out of their stance, they want to go parallel right now in this position and have their head up. All right, we're going to go one step and freeze right here. we got arc block to the right. Down. All right, go. Now, they got their head up right there. They're, they're looking right there. They don't have to step far again. It's just a pickup step to get them started right there. And at this position, if a defensive lineman or outside linebacker were to try to cross their face, then that's the person that has the force. All right, take it back. All right, now we'll go with two steps. Okay, we've got an arc block right. Down. Go. Right there. They're in good shape right there. Their head's up the field. They're trying to identify the force player. Somebody tried to cross their face. They've got their shoulder pads parallel. They could take them outside. All right, back. Now we'll go with three steps and freeze. Here we go. Down. Go. All right, good. Right there. Good. Good. All right, hurry back. Good. The main thing with the arc block is that these are deliberate steps that we teach a tight end to take. He's not in a hurry to get there because what happens if he gets in a hurry, he gets outside and makes the block. The defensive player plays off of it. Then here comes the pitch back and he tackles him for a five-yard gain. The reason it's deliberate is to keep him on alignment by the time he throws his block on the force defender, the pitch back should be near him and be able to cut off of it. He doesn't have to have a long block on the arc player out here. I'll just go all the way through with it right here. All right, we've got an arc block to the right. Down, and then release. Go. Good. Right there's a good look at it. Right there's a good look at it. When they turned up field, they had their head up the field, had their shoulder pads up the field. Okay, let's go back. We'll go to the left right there. All right, we'll go left and go the three steps and hold right there, okay? All right, this is arc block left. Okay, going three steps and hold. Down. Go. It's parallel, crossover, plant. There they are. Got the head up the field. All right, good. All right, bring them back. 
Okay, we'll put the whole thing with it right here. Full arc block to the left right here. Here we go. Down. Go. Good. Right there is good. Had the shoulders parallel and the head up the field. One of the blocks that's an auxiliary block that we teach is we get an inside defender. Uh, in certain plays, we would use this call with our offensive lineman. But we get an inside defender that's trying to take advantage of a, uh, any kind of line split at all, and we would make a gap call. A gap call alerts both offensive linemen to the block they're trying to make. What we're trying to do here is get a vertical double team. We're trying to take the two offensive linemen from this point right here, and they're going to get a roll step, and they're coming inside and up right there. And what we're trying to get is facing hands on this breastplate, facing hands on this breastplate at the same time and work a vertical double team. It will never happen when they're going this way. Okay, you've got to work, make sure that you drill and get behind them and look at those feet that they go inside and up and you're trying to make contact at the same time with a gap call. All right, here we go. Down. Go. Good. Oh, right there. That's good. That's good. You can get movement and get vertical movement if the timing is bam, right there. You'll get it things split if anybody is stepping at an angle inside. So they've got to sell out to the part of the roll step. What we're asking them to do is they're dead legging it with their inside foot. He's going to dead leg it and go swing it inside and up right there. He's going to dead leg it and swing it inside and up right there. And he's trying to put face and hands right there on the shoulder pads at the same time. Now they won't get it split. All right, let's come back and do it again right there. All right, got a gap call right here. Down. Go. Good. Oh, right there. That's good. The next block we add to our offensive line play and tight end play is a fold block. We're trying to fold block and widen the gap. At this position right here of a tight end and a tackle, we're trying to widen the B and the C gap. So as we fold, the tackle would become the kickout blocker. The tight end is going to fold underneath and block the near linebacker. So all the tackle is doing, we've already taught the block. We taught the down block. He treats this just like it's an inside technique. He's going to step right ahead and drive that line. We've already taught it. That is a, that is a down block. Okay? The fold, the fold player, here would be the tight end. The fold player, when the ball is is going to take a bucket step right there. Bucket step. Clear his hips so that the offensive lineman can come clear, and he comes right off his tail, ripping that shoulder up to the linebacker. So we're going to go two steps here and freeze. Okay, this is a full block on the left side. Okay, two steps and freeze. Down. Go. All right, good. Good, he's in good shape. Hold it right there. The reason we want him to bucket step is so that he's got plenty of room for the offense, the uh, inside lineman that's kicking out that he won't get caught up in the pile and get bumped off before he can get to the linebacker. All right, back. All right, we'll go all the way through with it here. Here we go. Down. Go. Open up. Come around. Good. Right there. Now we've increased the C gap and we've increased the B gap with a fold block on the left side. Okay, we're going to work a fold block on the right side. Again, we're trying to increase the C gap or the B gap right here. The tackle has got the down block. He's stepping right at the head of the down lineman. He's going to drive that line. The tight end here is going to open step, take the bucket step right here so that he can clear the tackle and he's coming inside to seal off the linebacker. All right, here we go. Two steps and freeze. Down. Go. Good step. Good. Right there is a good, clear route to get the fold block made. All right, back. You notice right there also the down blocker had his shoulders parallel and had a good base behind him. All right, let's go all the way through with it here. Okay, this will be a full. Down. Go. Inside, good. And he's got him sealed right there. All right, that's a good look at it. Okay, now we're going to show a full block inside with our guard and tackle. What we're trying to do here is increase the B gap or the A gap. So now with a full block here, the guard is going to go first. He's got a down block. He's taking the pickup step at the head. He's going to drive the line. Now the tackle will take the bucket step right there. He'll veer release and come inside off his tail, and he'll seal the linebacker. All right, here we go. We'll go with two steps and freeze right here. So we've got a full block here on the right side. Down. Go. Good. Right there is good. All right, back. Good. 
Good square position with the shoulders. Had a good base on him. Had a good turn of his shoulder pads right there. He's not going to get clogged up in the down block. All right, all the way with it. Fold block. Down. Go. Fold it. Get inside. Good. All right, good. Right there is good. Well, thank you for watching the video. I hope something in the video today gave you an idea, maybe gave you a new way of uh, talking about or teaching a uh, technique there to the offensive lineman. But uh, and we enjoyed doing it here at Carson Newman and hope it'll be of some benefit to you. Uh, we'd like to invite you here to our campus at any time while we're in practice or any time in the off season to sit down and visit with our coaches. But it's been a privilege uh, to have been in front of you today and, and offered up some ideas on offensive line play. I would like to go back over and I think stress a few important points. Uh, number one, I can't stress too much about stance. Uh, I really feel like that's the foundation of, of good offensive line play. Uh, the second part of that is being able to get out of a good stance, uh, coming off the ball and attacking the line of scrimmage. And then I think the part about uh, you know, keeping a good base uh, width of your feet, uh, playing behind your shoulder pads, shoulder pads always out in front of your knees, and then about the hitting position, about being safe with the kids uh, in the hitting position. I think those are all important points for us as coaches to pass on to players about offensive line play.